Up first, we are joined by Brad Lingo, Executive Director and Chairman of Pilot Energy with the ticker code PGY. Pilot is a company focused on the development of their Australian oil and gas projects. Uh, to tell us more, I will hand you over to Brad. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Jane. And it's always a pleasure to uh, bring uh, uh, existing and prospective investors up to speed on the Pilot story through the broker briefing. Um, Pilot is a um, ASX listed traditional oil and gas company. Um, we have um, uh, embarked on a new journey as an oil and gas company um, with uh, a very specific focus on leveraging our position um, in Western Australia, both in the Midwest and Southwest portions of the Perth Basin, both uh, offshore and onshore, um, to leverage those assets um, into the clean energy transition. Um, so uh, we have a significant position in the Midwest with our holdings um, in uh, the offshore uh, Perth Basin, um, principally around the Cliffhead oil field, and then significant onshore holdings in the South Perth Basin, uh, south of Kanana. And we see that those assets provide us a perfect leverage point um, to lead the way into the clean energy transition and leverage those, those assets into the production of both clean electrons and clean molecules in terms of both blue and green hydrogen. Um, our current market cap is uh, circa $30 million. Um, we have uh, significant um, renewable energy and hydrogen projects, as well as carbon management projects, um, uh, currently undergoing uh, feasibility evaluation. Um, we are looking at uh, utility scale um, renewable energy generation um, off of the back of our existing oil and gas operations, um, and to use those clean electrons to also support the production of a significant quantity of uh, both blue and green hydrogen. Uh, so what is our competitive advantage? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we have material holdings with recognized world-class natural resources, oil, oil, gas, blue hydrogen, and renewables. Um, from those material holdings, we have ownership in key energy licenses and infrastructure, um, which provide us the basis to um, undertake the feasibility study as well as to leverage uh, on an accelerated basis into um, the post-feasibility development of those projects. Um, we see that ability to leverage those existing assets into potential world-class competitive clean energy projects. Um, we're supported by a proven board and, um, and experienced management team. And with our recent $8 million capital raising um, through Bridge Street Capital, uh, we're kept well capitalized to uh, progress the transition. So the case for renewables, um, these, these slides and these images really tell the entire story. Renewable energy, whether it's uh, solar volatile offshore wind, onshore wind, um, they are pushing right to the bottom of the cost curve in comparison to um, uh, fossil fuel based uh, sources of electricity. Then when you look at um, our footprint in Western Australia in the Midwest region in particular, um, we have some of the best um, global offshore wind, as well as some of the best um, uh, onshore renewable solar resources. And we bring those things together, and it really uh, provides a, a compelling proposition. So what is our uh, transition development uh, strategy? One is to use that existing uh, footprint, to use that existing knowledge base, all of that, all of that uh, intelligence that's been built up around developing oil and gas projects, um, in the same um, footprint as these world-class renewable resources to, to streamline and accelerate our ability to go from feasibility to permitting. And that's really the stage we're at right now is going through that feasibility to permitting. And ultimately on the, the outcomes of those feasibility studies that we're undertaking um, in both the Midwest and the Southwest to go from permitting to partnering and, and to um, bring in large scale operating partners um, to join us in the development of these um, uh, renewable energy and hydrogen projects. So the Midwest Resu Renewable Resource Zone, it really has all the right stuff. It is a premium renewable resource precinct, um, both onshore and offshore. Um, it has been an area of historical government strategic focus by the WA government. 
um, most recently evidenced by the WA government's call for expressions of interest for the Okaji um, Green Hydrogen Strategic Industrial Area uh, uh, project. Um, there is significant growing uh, renewable energy demand, both from that strategic industrial area at Okaji, but also from BP's proposed green chemicals project. What also makes the area particularly attractive is that there's a lot of established infrastructure. There's a, a significant integrated, um, Southwest integrated system, uh, electricity transis, transmission system operated by Western Power. There's significant gas pipeline uh, capacity, both with the DBNGP and the Parmelia gas pipelines. And it's also well served by ports, road and rail, all necessary for the development of these uh, renewable energy and hydrogen projects. It's also an area that there is a clear hydrogen development pathway. First and foremost, through blue hydrogen, where Pilot believes that it has a competitive advantage as having the only asset in the Midwest region of Western Australia that currently has the legislative framework in place to support CCS, which is really an enabling capacity that allows the delivery of blue hydrogen. So our development plan, um, we have already formed a joint venture with Triangle Energy to assess the feasibility development of a combined um, wind and solar and integrated renewables project around the Cliffhead field. We've retained key global um, feasibility partners in terms of Technique, Genesis, Risk, Green Fuels, and Lautech. Um, based on those feasibility results, we will leverage, we seek to leverage our existing assets to develop these world-class clean energy projects in the Midwest and Southwest regions. And ultimately to take that to secure key commercial and financial partners to maximize value for uh, pilot shareholders. So how are we integrating infrastructure renewables and carbon management to deliver a competitive clean energy? Um, our existing position in the Cliffhead Wind and Solar Project, um, uh, we've already formed a joint venture with Triangle to look at the ability to leverage the, that renewable energy capacity through that infrastructure. The Cliffhead facilities provide that potential anchor point offshore for an offshore wind farm. Um, that infrastructure is unique um, and it is the only oil and gas infrastructure along the Midwest Coast uh, region of, of Western Australia. That provides us the opportunity to simplify and streamline feasibility and development, as well as to maximize the use of that existing infrastructure easements, operations, studies, and data um, to combine that offshore wind and existing operation creates that potential uh, creation of new value. So starting with that, we, we looked at the Beatrice Offshore Wind Farm offshore Scotland as really a case study for what we can do at Cliffhead. Um, and it's a perfect example where uh, Beatrice started off as an offshore um, uh, oil field operation, approximately the same distance as Cliffhead offshore the uh, coast of uh, Western Australia. Um, and in 2007, the owners of that field uh, put in a demonstrator project um, installing uh, wind turbines connected back to the offshore um, platforms to both power the platforms, but also to export power to shore. Um, and that was intended to be a five-year demonstrator project, which after two years, they were convinced of the proposition for the full-blown development. And Beatrice is now the largest operating um, uh, offshore wind farm in Scotland. So how does that play out? for Cliffhead is a location for a wind demonstrator project. Um, this is a conceptual um, drawing of what that project would look like, um, where we're focused on tying back three to six wind turbines back to the Cliffhead platform, generating up to 60 megawatts. Um, that platform is already connected back to shore by power supply and to maximize the utilization of both the platform and um, that um, uh, power export capacity um, to take power back to shore. Um, this is a conceptual development. It is subject to the completion of the feasibility study, completion, joint venture and regulatory approvals, and ASX re recompliance. Um, we also have combined with that offshore wind capacity, um, uh, large scale onshore solar. Um, that combination in the West, West Australian Midwest region is by bringing offshore wind and onshore solar, we deliver high capacity and low cost. Um, this project is also uh, quite advanced. 
um, and all, is also um, progressing through the feasibility stage. And it could be executed, um, you know, subject to the feasibility results in the next 24 to 36 months. There are multiple commercialization pathways for that, those clean electrons that we're generating. There's power to the grid. There's power for the production of domestic hydrogen. There's power um, for that hydrogen and electricity to go into green steel, as well as um, domestic hydrogen for green chemicals. Uh, along with that, we have that capacity to provide carbon management, um, where we can actually sequester um, any carbon generated out of any of these industrial processes back at the, the Cliffhead uh, Reservoir um, as a very low cost and effective carbon capture and storage project. So uh, the following slide gives us our um, key milestones and activities, um, uh, both at the corporate level, oil and gas and blue hydrogen renewals. Um, and we have quite a busy year to the end of this year. And going into calendar year 2022 is when we will have the um, early in the year, the, the results of our existing feasibility studies. So then we know exactly how we're gonna progress um, both in time, schedule, cost, and phasing of each of these streams, both in clean electrons and clean molecules. So pilots competitive advantage, material holdings in, with world-class resources, ownership of key energy licenses and infrastructure, leveraging those existing oil and gas assets into these potential world-class competitive clean energy projects, all backed by a proven and experienced board and management team, and we're all well capitalized to progress this transition. Thank you very much. Thanks for the great presentation, Brad. It's always good to have you on Broker Briefing. Um, we've had a few questions come through, particularly on the sort of offshore um, rights, but I might jump into a couple here. So what type of operating partner or financial partners is the company currently targeting? Um, look, we've, we've been approached by a, a broad array of partners um, uh, from one end of the spectrum, uh, companies that are um, uh, operators and participants in large-scale renewable energy projects, all the way to uh, partners that are really financial participants. So um, it's really, uh, you know, um, I, th I see ultimately a mix of partners that we'll be bringing in. Um, and um, uh, it's, it's actually, as we get more and more into the feasibility, we're getting more and more inquiries. You know, we're, we're not having to seek uh, partners that are coming out and seeking us. Thank you. And just another one. So what are the benefits of offshore versus onshore wind? Um, there's a really good, there's a really good um, uh, presentation that was prepared by Invisian for the West Australian government um, as part of the support package for um, the call for expression of interest for the Okaji strategic industrial area. And in that presentation, it shows you that the really clear advantage that offshore wind provides you. Um, one, it's a, it's a more consistent and reliable resource. Two, that generates much uh, higher capacity factors. And ultimately, offshore rather than onshore, you can use and install much larger wind turbines. So what does that all generate? That generates one, a more reliable energy source, um, uh, a less socially obtrusive um, uh, footprint. Um, if you put it far enough offshore, um, you can't even see it. Uh, and ultimately that drives um, a, the, the, the combination of factors drives a lower cost of energy, the LCOE, and ultimately a more reliable resource that is easier to achieve a social license to operate. Wonderful. Well, that's all we've got time for today, Brad. Um, there were a few, a few other questions that did come through. So I would encourage webinar attendees to reach out by the contact details on the bottom of the ASX releases. But thanks for joining us, Brad. Thank you very much, Jane. I really appreciate it.